Hey, what's up everybody? Mystery Wheel Gunner here. Gonna clean the big hand cannon. Yeah, I've been shooting it quite a bit and it's gotten kind of dirty. So I figured I'd clean it and, uh, you know, have you guys along. Let me just state right off the bat, I'm not here to try and sell you on any cleaning uh, supplies. This is Ballastol. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not trying to sell you on it. You go ahead and use whatever it is that you want to use. If what you're using right now works good for you, hey, keep with it. I'm just mentioning it because if I don't mention it, you're going to ask, hey, what is that? So, yeah, it's just good old plain Ballastol. Alrighty. So, first thing I like to do, use some paper towel and just kind of wipe down the gun. It's empty, of course. So, you can see there, whoo! Gotten kind of dirty. <laughs> yeah. So what I'll do is just put a little bit, just a drop of ballastol right there. Well, technically that was two drops, but whatever. And what I'm looking to do is just get rid of the loose, uh, you know, the loose gunk. See that? That just, that came off really easily. Some of the some of the fouling on here. Not every bit of fouling is going to be, you know, burned in, so to speak. So the more of that loose fouling you can take off early, the better it's going to be. Because you want all that loose fouling out of the way, so that when you when you do address the the really tough caked on fouling, with the loose fouling out of the way. You know, your solvent can get right to the, the tough stuff. And if you do decide to go heavy early with the, uh, with the solvent, sorry, I'm trying to keep it in frame. I keep, I usually do not clean while the camera is here. So sometimes I, I'm going to not have something in frame properly. But anyway, if you do go heavy on the solvent early, it's not going to hurt anything. But what, what's going to happen is your solvent is going to combine with the loose fouling. And you're, you're basically, basically just going to get mud. It's not going to hurt anything. But cleaning your gun is already going to be kind of a messy endeavor. So anything you can do to mitigate the messiness will be in your favor. Excuse me. Ballast, the smell of ballastol makes me cough every once in a while, so yeah, I'm going to cough a little bit here. So as you can see, a lot of the fouling is just coming off with just a, a gentle wipe. There we go. See, look at that. It's already looking a lot better. And I wasn't even really scrubbing that hard, you know? Now, the rest of this, obviously, is really caked on there so that's okay with all the surface stuff gone the next round of ballast is going to get going to get right to it all righty so you've got all sorts of theories about what's going to happen on eclipse day you know man there's a whole bunch of theories I don't know what's going to happen. Just straight up honest. But, you know, I, I will be at the range that day. I, I looked at the forecast. Looks like it's going to be a nice day. Nice day to be out at the range. And I don't know. Are zombies going to come up from the ground? You know, will the moon beast land on Earth to eat me? I don't know. All right, next up, uh, I'm just going to wipe down each of the chambers real quick. Again, seeing how much of that surface fouling I can get off there. Not really looking to do any, do any heavy scrubbing. Looks fairly clean anyway. Wipe down the back of the cylinder here. Anyway, so I'll be at the range, the outdoor range, 
And if you look at the map, Ohio is one of the best states to be in if you're going to be one of those uh, eclipse watchers. Oh, sorry. Like I said, this palace dog makes me cough a little bit. So if anything weird is going to happen during the eclipse, that's probably going to ha happen in Ohio. And I want to be prepared. Just in case. So if I need Mr. Hand Cannon, yeah, he's going to be ready. All right, next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to soak a patch here. I can reuse this one, actually. Oh, again, sorry about the coughing. Oops, I forgot something. Hang on, I'm going to pause it here. All right, got my little cleaning rod guide. You don't, you, you don't really need it, if you're careful. You don't really need that thing. If you take it nice and slow, there's no way that your cleaning rod is going to damage your barrel. But I have it anyway. I use the, the guide anyway, just to make myself feel a little better. All right, so what I'll do is put that right on there. I'm going to put a decent amount of ballast oil on there. Usually the barrel isn't too fouled. Remember how bad the breech face looked? Usually the barrel is not that bad. So I'm not really worried about making mud <laughs> by saturating the barrel early. So I'm just going to stick this down the barrel. Give it a few passes. I, I want the barrel saturated because I'm going to let the ballast all do the work for me. I'm just going to soak that barrel. And ballast all. And then I'm just going to let it sit for a little bit while I clean the rest of the gun. All right, let that soak. And you can see, yeah, it already pulled a decent amount of gunk from the barrel. And then this is still got a, quite a bit of solution still on it. So I'm going to use that. Now I'm going to soak this part of the gun. Let me go ahead and re refresh it. Whoop. And some more ballast all. Because this looks pretty stubborn here. So I'm really going to soak that in. And I'm, I'm going to let that sit for a bit. Give that a good wipe down. Ooh, you can see how much ballastol is there. Wipe down the other parts of the gun with this. Clean the cylinder face. Well, the rear face of the cylinder. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. All whoops, looking pretty good already. All right, here's where I'm gonna have to do a little bit of scrubbing, just because of this part. You, know, you got all these little nooks and crannies in there. I just take my little bore brush and use it as a little ad hoc brush. <laughs> sure, you can use like a, you know, like an old toothbrush. 
or the toothbrush of your roommate that you hate. Just kidding, don't do that. Don't do that to your roommate. <laughs> no matter how much you may dislike that person. That's, that's, that's just cold. And there we go. Works pretty good. And no, I'm not damaging it because, uh, you know, I'm not pushing it in there so, so that the uh, the core of the of the the brush is is rubbing on the steel. I'm just letting the bristles do the work. There we go. Now I'll just refresh the brush here with some more ballastol. Put that on there. Then run it through each of the chambers. One. Two. Three, four, and five. There we go. Get another piece of paper towel. And then clean the extractor rod and underneath the extractor star. This, this can get kind of gunked up. It's usually not too bad, but it's something you do need to clean. Get under here. Make sure this is clean. You definitely don't want a whole lot of gunk accum accumulating underneath the star because then if enough gunk gets in there, that star is not going to fall flush like it needs to. All right, let me... Now, keep in mind, I'm not looking to get this factory new, all right? It's not going to look factory new, but it doesn't need to. I shoot my hand cannon enough times throughout the year that, you know, I really don't see the need to try and get it. You know, factory new each time I clean it because it's just going to get dirty again in a few weeks so you know the little bit of fouling that's on that gear you know yeah it may look unsightly but it's not gonna hurt it it's not going to impede functionality one bit it's gonna go ahead and kind of clean that off just a little bit more but again you know that small amount of oh sorry <laughs> Gonna try to try my best to keep it all in frame, but sometimes I forget that what I'm seeing through my eyes is not what you're seeing through the camera. And if I use the camera as my eye, uh, things get kind of weird. So that right there, that's already, to be honest, clean enough. But let me go ahead and see if I can get, get that just a little bit cleaner. There we go. Let that soak in a bit. And while that gets to work on that little gear, I'm gonna go ahead and see what's going on with this part here, remember? Had some of that caked on stuff. 
I'm going to let the ballast all soak in there a little bit longer. So let's give that a wipe. Now, put a little more ballast all on there. Hey, looking pretty good. Let me just just do a little bit of scrubbing on there. So yeah, got got to use some elbow grease every once in a while. Sorry, I, I got to take it off frame for just a little bit so I can hold the gun in a more advantageous way for me. But I'm not doing anything special off off camera. I'm just holding the gun where it's a little more comfortable for me. And there we go. Look at that. That's looking much better. Again, is it 100% factory new? No. But, again, it doesn't need to be. And remember, this is a stainless steel gun. So, you know, just saying, if this was a blued gun, you wouldn't even notice <laughs> some of these slight bits of fouling that are left on there. But look at that. See that? Yeah, that's more than good enough. Alright, clean that up. The breech face is looking good. What was I doing? Oh yeah, that's right. Get back to that little extractor gear. Maybe do just a little bit more scrubbing. Oh, yeah, so that's looking much better now. All right. Go in there. Let me get a fresh piece of paper towel. Yeah, I know I got these patches here, but you know what? Paper towel, uh, for some parts, paper towel works just as well, and it's cheaper. So I use the, uh, the patches for other things. There we go. Looking better than before. And again, even, even what it looked like before was more than good enough. Time to take this off here. Now that barrel's been soaking with all that ballast all in there. So I'm going to take this off. Oops. <laughs> it's, it started to unscrew over here. See that? All right, I want to unscrew it from here. Come on now. There we go. Now let me reorient that. There we go. Let me refresh the bristles here. Put some more ballast on. Whoop, as I grip some. There we go. I tend to use more than you really need. You don't really need a whole lot. But all right, I'm gonna feed it through. Ah, come on, open up. Feed it through the muzzle end. This gun's so long, I can't get everything into frame, but uh, basically, you put the, uh, the cleaning rod guide in there. Helps keep it more centered. Well, there we go, I can get it into the full frame right there. Keeps it more centered. And again, if you go slow, you're not going to ding anything, but it just makes me feel a little bit better. So then you just push it on through. Go slow. All right. You're gonna. You're, and you're just gonna come back the other way. All right. I go with two passes. So that's the first pass. Now 
Now the second pass. There we go. There. And that's going to be good enough to break apart whatever filing was left in there. Now I just got to sweep all that out. And I use another implement for that. Hang on a second. Okay, I've got one of these. It's a bore tip. It's, I like these because it's kind of a... I've just recently started using these. It, it's kind of like a jag. Uh, it, it's like you got a plastic jag uh, and it's wrapped. Uh, or let me start over. It's a kind of like a foam patch wrapped around a plastic jag. So this kind of takes the place of these. I, I brought these out just out of, out of force of habit, but these are great. Kind of a game changer. All right, so I'm gonna put this on to the little adapter thingy here. There we go. Thread that onto here. Gonna put just a few drops with ballast all again. Like one drop on each side, good enough. Well, put a drop here too. Again, you don't need a whole lot. I tend to use more than I really need. And then, time to just swab this out. And once again, no need to go fast. Just go nice and slow. Use the little guide. And again, if you go slow, you don't really need it. But I'm going to use it anyway. Again, that plastic core is kind of like a little jag. So it is going to be tight, but it's supposed to be. And yeah, I'm tapping it in just very gently because that is a tight fit. All right, getting near the end there. Tap, 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 tap. There we go. And look at all that gunk it picked up, huh? And then just bring it back out. And it's done. <laughs> How cool is that? Look at all look at all the gunk it picked up. Alright. Next up. Uh, still got to mop out the uh, cylinders, or uh, the chambers in the cylinder. I know what you're thinking. Well, should you use a new one of these? No, it's very good. The, the foam traps all that gunk. And yeah, I know. Some of you purists are going to be like, oh, you need to change that out. Yeah, you can if you want. But again, the foam traps all that gunk. It'll be all right, folks. It'll be all right. I promise. I'm not going to end up smearing <laughs> the fouling into the chambers. That's not how it works. You know what? It's probably going to be easier if I just... Let me do it a different way real quick. What I will do is refresh the bore tip. Just a little bit more ballast all again. Don't need a whole lot. There we go. And just push that through.
one. Two. Three. Four. And five. And look at that. It picked up even more gunk. And again, the foam is going to trap that fouling, so it's, you don't have to worry about it smearing, fouling uh, through your chambers. All right. Looks like we're just about done. Let me tear off a new piece of paper towel. Ooh. Actually, I didn't even need to do that. I still got this stuff here. So just doing the, the detail stuff now. Now you can see I've got these burns right here. I don't really care about those, to be honest. They're a little unsightly, I guess. I think it gives my revolver a character, you know. Let's people know I've been shooting the thing. <laughs> and let's people know, yeah, I don't shoot Mickey Mouse loads through these, all right? You don't get these burns from Mickey Mouse loads. These are, I've been shooting, shooting some hard charging stuff through here. Not the hottest stuff. I'm not gonna sit here and say I've been putting buffalo bore through this thing because whoa, that would be punishing. But you know, long story short, I, I throw some, or I push some good solid 500 Magnum through this thing. There we go. Oh, also you gotta clean in there in the cylinder stop notch. And once again, I'm unprepared. <laughs> Let me pause it here while I get my little... Oh no, wait, here it is. Duh. So this is just a little plastic card. I don't even know what it was. <laughs> all, all the information is worn off there. I, I, I don't think it was a credit card. No, it wasn't a credit card. It was some kind of card. Anyway, I use this to clean those little stop notches. A little bit of ballastol again. And I cut it into this shape there. I just do that. Put the paper towel over the card. And with it shaped like that, it fits right into that stop notch. And I can just kind of wiggle it around and scrub it. I suppose you can also use a a q-tip swab as well but look at that see that and it picked up a little bit of fouling in there usually there's not a whole lot of fouling in those in that stop notch but whatever is in there you should, you should just go ahead and clean that out and just go over it again one two three four and five there it is all right and the revolver is basically clean the chambers are clean barrels been swapped out breech face looks really good remember how bad that looked in the beginning looks almost new now let me just wipe down the forcing cone real quick With the forcing cone, I'm just looking to get the build up out of there. All right, I'm not looking to make that thing shiny. I just want to get the crud build up out. So yeah, it's still dark, but guess what? That's not going to hurt the revolver. As long as you get the build up off of there, you can tell too. Just run your finger over there. You can tell whether it's whether it's true build up or whether it's just eh baked on surface fouling. All right, okay, looks pretty good. And because this is ballastol, it's a CLP, whatever thin film is left, it's all good. And there it is, all that's left is just kinda, is to just give the gun a general wipe down. It's 
you can see a little bit of fouling there, you know, but I'm not stressing out over that. <laughs> Just wipe the revolver down. Some people take off their optic when they clean their guns. You can if you if you want, obviously. But I usually don't. I'm usually careful enough that I don't splash the CLP onto the optics lens. And there we go. It's all good. And if you're worried that you got some CLP on your lens, well, just take a clean bit of paper towel, wipe off the loose oil that may have gotten on there, and then finish it out with a microfiber. Whatever that paper towel didn't get, the microfiber will. All right, and there we go. Hand cannon is ready for duty once again. I mean, it was ready for duty before, as, as bad and, and dirty as it looked in the beginning. <laughs> it's still going to shoot. But anyway, all right. Whatever happens on Eclipse Day, me and the hand cannon will be ready. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Give me a like, give me a subscribe. You know, well, you know the deal. Throw some comments in there. Hey, thanks once again for watching. Catch you guys next time. Stay safe on Eclipse Day. And if you got a hand cannon, uh, keep it ready.